Welcome back to Canopy Lake Park in Salem, New Hampshire. The park started in 1902, as you can see on the top there. And I wanted to come back to this park because a lot of stuff has happened since the last time I did a walkthrough. So let's walk into the entrance here, this beautiful wood paneled archway and go right in front there toward the pine tree onto the main midway. And you can see that iconic giant box of popcorn over on the left. We're gonna head toward that. Uh, it's a lot of the structures in the park look like they're right out of the game Roller Coaster Tycoon. They're really whimsical. So what I wanna do now is make a sort of clockwise loop around the park and show you what's new and different in this year in 2019. So we could go right from there or we could go straight, but we're gonna go left and head that way. Now, if we had gone straight at that point on our left, which now on our right would have been the Canopy 500, which is a really nice little uh, race car ride. Over there, you can see the restrooms. And if we were to go up that way, it would take you around to lockers. And there's also a ladder game out there. You can see the giant wheel in front of us right there. And we're gonna head down to Old Canopy Village. Over here on the right, is Paintball Hollow, if you like firing paintball guns. As you'll notice, the park is wonderfully shady. It's just a really beautifully landscaped park, uh, especially on a hot day. You're thankful that there are all these trees all over. There's Whack-A-Mole. Over on the left is Lucky Miner Flume Photos. And then over here on the right is something new. It's the puzzle rooms and they have a set of puzzles and they give you a time limit and you try to solve the puzzles they give you and over here is a nice little dixieland band the dixie hot four and if you had taken that path to the left at the entrance that would have brought you out over there and here's the policy pond sawmill a wonderful log flume one of the most beautiful log flumes around really and notice all these paths there are tons of intertwining paths throughout the park and we can't really cover them all so that's why i'm saying we're doing sort of a roughly clockwise sweep of the park but you can see that we could wander through all sorts of little paths here really nice theming on a lot of the rides too they take a lot of care with that that was a little kitty canoe ride that goes through a big concrete teepee that's also used by the Policy Pond Sawmill, which you can see right there. It's really nice because it's a concrete trough set down into the ground, so it feels very organic. And over on the right there, you can see Hagerman's Vaudeville Magic Show, uh, which is on the little stage there. And there are some water slides back there. This area is known as Tall Timber Square. And there's a really good little restaurant back there on the right. You can barely see it there. And right over here is one of my favorite rides in the park, Mine of Lost Souls, which is a really nice dark ride. For a, a small family-run park like this, that's a pretty amazing ride to have in there. It has really high-quality animatronics in it, really nice theming. It's very well done. And you can see the chicken coop there, ski ball. And again, notice the really nice theming throughout this whole area. Really nice pavement. It's made to look like brick, even though it's concrete. They take a lot of care in how things are designed. And like I said, it is family run. There are basically three families that own the park and they have for decades. And they really take a lot of pride in how this place is maintained and how it's themed. And here's Pirate, a typical little pirate ship that you would see at most amusement parks. And now we're gonna get into one of the new areas in the park, and it's pretty extensive. You can tell we're getting there by this broken pirate ship that chops this midway in half here. Off in the distance, you can see the Canopy Corkscrew roller coaster. But surrounding the coaster now, 
you'll notice something very different. Castaway Island. Now, they have had that castaway theme in a small water park that's now dwarfed by this. It's tucked toward the back end of this. But Castaway Island is huge. I was very surprised at how big it is. This is the area that used to be just a big grassy field and the park's train, the Canopy Express, would go around this area and then out on the lake. And they've completely transformed this into a really huge water park extension. It's got lots and lots of shops. On the left there, a couple times a day, a mermaid appears and we'll talk to the kids. And there is, you can't really see it from here, there's a massive lazy river there. You can see the new water slides back there. We'll get a glimpse of the lazy river around here, around the corner. And like I said, lots of eateries. And look at the theming in here, too. It's really nicely done. So there's a glimpse of the lazy river. Notice how packed this place is. They actually have a queue line for the water park because it tends to get so packed that they end up having to turn people away for a while until the place clears out a bit. So over here at the back end, this is the old section of the Castaway Island area, the original water park they put in, which now seems tiny compared to the rest of this area. That is a dead end over there, so if you go in there, you can't get out that way. You have to go back here for the exit. They did seem to have really a temporary barricade up there, so maybe in the future they will allow people to pass right through, but for now, you have to turn around and go back. Over here on the left was a little kitty splash area. So I was really sad to see the train get shortened because I really like the Canopy Express, but they did a really good job theming that area and it seems to be incredibly popular with guests. In fact, the day we were there, it was so mobbed they had to open up a lot of other um, sort of ancillary parking areas, um, grassy areas that they had at edges of the park in order to get all the cars in. And there you can see the back end of the Canopy 500. There's the corkscrew. And that gravel area right next to the corkscrew, that used to be the track for the Canopy Express. There's a the Dippin' Dots over on the right. The big structure in front of us is the back of the big Frisbee that they have, the Extreme Frisbee ride. Now, we could keep walking straight. You can see that giant spinning Hamburg in front of us. That's the Bebop Diner, which is one of the good eateries in the park. They also serve veggie burgers that are quite good. And we could either take a left here, or we could keep going straight, or we could go right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a left here so I can show you where the new station of the Canopy Express is. And if you look closely, just beyond the spinning Hamburg, you can see the old station of the Canopy Express. And what they have in there now is they have their mutoscopes. Canopy has an enormous number of wonderful antique devices around, including mutoscopes, which were an early form of looking at motion pictures. You put a nickel in, and then you crank a handle, and you basically look through a little viewfinder and you see flip books. And they're basically old silent movies like Charlie Chaplin and Boxers, things like that. But it's really neat they keep all that in working order. Again, notice all the little twisty paths. We're going to stay to the left over here. Those little cages that you can see, there's one there on the left, there's another one on the far right. Those contain peacocks. And over here you can see the back end of Castaway Island. And there's a little kitty swing ride. So in here there are some nice little kitty rides scattered about. In front of us now is the Dragon Coaster.
And there is the station for the Canopy Express. It's actually, again, beautifully designed. Really has a nice retro feel to it. And you can also see Canopy Lake itself off in the distance. This big white structure is Turkish Twist, which is a rotor. And then this big building over here on the left normally is their storage building, but during the Halloween season, it is their scream fest. Um, so like many parks, they have this big Halloween event. This little area that we're coming up to now with these quaint buildings is a sort of old New England sea town that's beautifully themed. And as you're going to see, I'm not going to walk through that for a very specific reason. Again, notice all the winding paths here that we could take. They're splitting off in all directions. And we'll be coming up more toward this way. I just want to take you down into that old New England area to take a look at the Boston Tea Party, which is one of the most amazing shoot the shoots ride ever made. So here we are in ye old Boston. And of course, Boston is famous for its bubbles. And here comes the Boston Tea Party down the covered lift. Watch this. That's a splash. And notice how densely packed it is through here. If you keep going down there, there's a really good fish store on the left. But we're going to just circle around this way. And notice this little green and yellow station over here on the right. They have these scattered throughout the park. Those are smoking stations. Um, I, I mean, it's, I guess, okay. They say it's a no-smoking park, but they have smoking stations. So if you are allergic to tobacco smoke, you'll encounter those here and there. And up here, this gets us to the main midway. We're not going to go up this way right now. I just wanted to show you this ride here. Wave Blaster is sort of a modern day variation on the old flying coaster, like Kennywood's Kangaroo Ride. And they have that tucked away in there. And you'll notice that there are a lot of little rides tucked away all over the place. They don't really stick them in your face. They're really nicely blended into the landscape. This area on the right is an entire kiddie land with some classic rides like the helicopter rides. A little kitty carousel there. So plenty for little kids to do. But like a traditional family park, this place also has plenty for everyone to do together. And that's one of the things that I like a lot about it. So you can ride with your little kids on most of the rides in the park. Canopy Club, as you saw, is a little membership thing you can get involved in for discounts and extras. Flower Power is a kitty whip. This structure, uh, it's decorative. It marks one of the oldest structures in the park. This is where the trolleys used to come in and stop when dropping people off at Canopy Lake a century ago. Here's the Pancho Cantina if you like Mexican food. And then over here they were doing a lot of work. There's the Skyride Station up there. But right here in front of us, they're building what they're calling the Venetian Carousel. It's a double-decker carousel. So when this is done, Canopy Lake will have three merry-go-rounds in the park, which is pretty amazing. And in the distance there, you could see the old fountain, one of the oldest structures in the park, and they're renovating that as well. Now we'll take a walk down here toward the far west end of the park. The dance hall has really good shows. Canopy gets some really good entertainment in here. Uh, they've had amazing Michael Jackson impersonators and Elvis impersonators and Beatles impersonators. And when we were there, they had the Twisted Circus. So let's keep moseying on. We're heading north on the midway now, and you can see the lake off in the distance. 
they have a boat that goes out for a nice 20 minute ride around the lake. It's called the Blue Heron. Over on the left is Portofino's, which has some really good Italian style food, like lasagna and pasta and stuff like that. In front of us is Da Vinci's Dream, which is a beautifully themed swing ride. And over on the left used to be the North train station, but no, the train doesn't stop there anymore. Uh, it just makes a complete circuit from the station that we saw earlier. It comes all the way out here and just keeps going back and stops at the other station toward the south. You can see the mini scooter, Dodgem cars for kids, and a little arcade over there. And over here is another one of the beautifully preserved rides in the park. That's a caterpillar with an actual working canvas that comes over at the top. A balloon ride. Again, nothing really special about the ride, but the theming is really nicely done. There's Skater. And we're going to take a left over here and walk toward the far north end. There are picnic pavilions out there, so if you have a catered event, it will probably be out there. But there's also one other major ride, and that's Psychodrome, which is basically a scrambler in the dark. There you can see in the distance all the tents for catering. And there's a nice shot of the lake out there. We're coming up on the back of Bear Lodge, and you'll see more of that in a minute. And we're also at the back of Autobahn, which is a kiddie car ride inside this tent here, this dome on the right. And they also have these wonderful, colorful chairs, as you can see there, that they put out so when parents put their kids on the ride, they can just sit and relax. There's another view of the fountain with the sky ride going over it. And so we're going to just take a left over here. And there's a little restaurant right here. And that's on the side of Bear Lodge. And it's called Bear Lodge because of Untamed, which is the park's Euro coaster over here. It's a pretty intense ride. And we'll watch it go through its paces for a second. Yep, that's intense. Okay, so let's take a little peek into Bear Lodge over here. All through the park, they have these really interesting little benches that are animals with seats carved out of them. There's the bear, and there are some more animals over here, but look down there. They have the pinball parlor. One of the owners of the park is a big pinball enthusiast, and they have some great machines in there. Some modern ones like Jersey Jack's Wizard of Oz and some old classics like Whirlwind. So if you like pinball, they've got you covered in there. Very rare that you see a, a nice pinball parlor that's well kept. All right, so now let's head back south along the midway. Over here on the left is the station for the antique cars, always popular. Over here on the right, this is still all blocked off because of the construction. <laughs> There's a nice shot of what the Venetian carousel will look like. And now on the right is the pizzeria, right next to the Skyride station. 
And over on the left is the Star Blaster, which is a drop tower. Way over there on the right is that Kitty Land that we saw earlier. So that's the east end of the Kitty Land. And you have all these really nicely decorated and themed games all along here. In front of us now is the station for their 1936 gem of a roller coaster, Yankee Cannonball. A wonderful wooden coaster that packs a punch. And as you can see, it's really popular. So let's take a look through the magic of video and watch this thing go around its course. And back to the station. As you can see, it's a really interesting layout. It's a sort of L-shaped out and back, but a lot of fun. And over here on the right is the Midway stage, and they have all sorts of acts going on here all day, from uh, Bruno Mars and a Taylor Swift impersonator to acts for kids with some of the park characters. And in front of us now is the International Food Festival. Not sure what's so international about it. Basically has ice cream and pizza and things like that. There's the Wave Blaster that we saw earlier going through its paces. So let's keep moving south now. Again, you can see all those whimsical things uh, on the top of the buildings, all the ice cream cones and the Coke and the fries. There's a teacup ride over on the right. And a lemonade stand. And notice how even though they have a kitty land, per se, they also have all sorts of kids' rides scattered throughout the park. Over here on the left is a big arcade with lots of stuff in it, besides pinball machines. Zero Gravity is a roundup. And this amazing structure here is the Dodgem Cars. Wonderful Art Deco feel to that. Now notice the Polynesian theming over here. There used to be in this spot where the tables are in the barbecue, that used to be the tiki maze, the big crystal maze they had for a long time. Um, but they kept the Polynesian theming throughout and it ties nicely into the Castaway Island area, which I think is why they did it to begin with, to try to pull all that together. And over here, again, another amazing whimsical thing, Wipeout. Uh, is really nicely themed with that starfish on top and that amazing surfer with the wave hanging up over the entrance. I love that type of attention to detail in a park. And there's their uh, rooster, which is essentially a flying jets kind of ride. And you can see the extreme frisbee in the background going through its paces. And there's ice jet which is a Matterhorn ride. Over here on the right is another big eatery, the Trellis, 
which has hamburgs, hot dogs, and also really good veggie burgers and really thick pizza. And over here is their gorgeous carousel. It's essentially a 1903 machine, but it has a wide mix of different carvers on it, which makes it extremely unusual. And it's a menagerie. It has a lot of different types of animals. And it also has a really interesting deck that's stepped up. So there are two different levels to the ride, sort of like a mini um, Venetian carousel. And they also have that wonderful working band organ from 1922. So that's well worth a look when you're in the park. And that takes us back toward the entrance. In front of us now, you can see the main gift shop, which has some really nicely themed t-shirts and magnets and gifts like that. There's a whimsical fried dough stand. So if you are coming to the Salem, New Hampshire area, or even if you're in that upper northeast area of New England, you have to stop by Canopy Lake. It is an absolute gem of a park. Um, really fun. Even if you're not into big rides, they have a lot of just fun, mild rides for anyone to do. And it's just a pleasure to just sit in the park and relax. I like coming here just to unwind whether I ride anything or not. So, Canopy Lake Park, one of the most beautiful parks in New England and one of my favorite stops. I hope you enjoyed your visit.